Uh, yeah, uh, uh, apologies. The, um, the, this is about the third time I've given this pitch. Tri trains have uh, been a long time um, coming, so we apologize for the late arrival of this train. <laughs> Points failure at crew, leaves on the line. Um, but this time you've got to listen, because um, uh, the, <laughs> the previous uh, iterations of this pitch had uh, different, slightly different experimental uh, versions, uh, and this is the way it's going to be. It's actually simplified from um, the previous times, uh, so the, the, the trains are really easy, and I'll show you the... Uh, um, the definitions. This is the kind of archetypal train. Uh, this is a, the definition that uh, if we have a number of functions in isolation up until now this has been a syntax error. Uh, if you just typed row row in your session and hit return, uh, APL didn't like this because there wasn't an argument to, uh, to apply. And uh, as I've said before, this is Ken's brilliant idea. It was brought into dialogue by Roger. We, we have Roger to, to thank for this. Um, so all, all we've done is, uh, what, what I've spent a career doing is stealing good ideas from people. Uh, so this is the, the archetypal train. If I have three functions, uh, f, g and h, in isolation, and I give an ar that, that constitutes a function, a uh, function train. If I give arguments either side, then this is a definition. It applies um, the left. Uh, this is a fork with three prongs in it. Uh, it applies uh, the the left and the right prong, uh, the functions between the arguments, and then it uses the middle prong as a dyadic function between the results of those. So this is all there is to it. Yeah, this is the definition. Uh, a three train is uh, interpreted in this way. Uh, that's, that's a, the, and there are three flavors of this. If uh, the next one is if the left tine of a fork is an array rather than a function, um, then that is used as the, as the left tine of, of the result. And you can see uh, these kind of line up nicely. So on the left, if the, instead of an F I have an A, then that replaces the, the leftmost expression, the A replaces the expression uh, in the result. And finally, if I have only two functions, then that left time disappears altogether. So you could, you, if you look at the, um, uh, the patterns there, it's very straightforward. And that's all, that's all there is to it. Uh, the, the top two are, uh, you can call them three trains, and the bottom one are, is a two train. But you, you can see um, it's, it's easy to understand what's going on. Uh, and what you'll note is that the G, uh, in the first two cases, the G is dyadic because there's something to its left. In the second case, the G is monadic. Um, and this two train is known, as, this is an idea s stolen from Jay. Uh, the functionality there is called a top. We, we would say, we could say this. Uh, the bottom thing is G atop H, because we're applying H between the arguments and then G on top of that. Um, uh, trains can be monadic and dyadic, so the monadic cases are identical, except the alphas disappear from each of these expressions. So that's no, if you look at the, to the top block and the bottom block, they're identical, except the, um, the alphas have gone. And, and that's it. That's, that's what's coming in V14. Yeah? Now, I'll, I'll show you each of these in operation. Um, here, let me just rack this up very slightly, if I can. Um, uh, this is just, uh, uh, to, just to make an, uh, some examples. Uh, there's nothing special about this. This is just a, a two by one matrix. It's a two row, one column matrix with a two in each slot. I'm going to use that as, uh, as an argument. So no, nothing magic about that. It's just a, a one column matrix. So if I, here's an example of, actually let me scroll this down a bit so we can still see the definition. Um, so this is an example of a three train. So it's the very first definition. Uh, so what this is doing is applying uh, it's doing a, a, a 6 divide by col, uh, giving me a 3, 3, uh, as the left tine. 
and a 6 minus col, which gives me 4, 4 as the right tine, and then the catenation is happening between them. So it's just slavishly applying this definition. We're substituting uh, divide, comma, and minus for the F, G, and H. No, nothing clever. So to uh, the next flavor, if I had a, a, an array as the left tine, then I have zero uh, catenated with the difference, uh, six minus col. You see the difference between those? Yeah? It's just applying these definitions. And a final one is if I have a two train, this is just applying ravel, a monadic in this case, to the uh, six minus col. Those, those are the three cases. And I can go through the same thing if I run this same expression monadically. This is the reciprocal of col catenated with the negate of col, where col was just 2, 2. And here we have 0 catenated with the negation of col. And the final, final case is just the ravel of the negation of col. And actually, the monadic um, two train is the same as composition. It, it just happens to be the same as a, a jot. It would, if I'd have typed comma jot to negate, I would have got the same thing. So those are the again. That's an, using the same uh, primitive functions. Those are example. Those are the distinctions between the, uh, the the cases. Um, terrains. If I can have trains with many more than two or three carriages and they collect from the right, they associate right. So what this is saying is that if I had a train, if F, G, H, J and K were functions in isolation, then the way the interpreter sees that is it starts binding them in groups of three uh, from the right. So no matter how many are, it, it'll take the first three, make those a function, then to take that and the next two and make them a function. So I have two cases in this case. Uh, if I have an even number of, uh, if I have an odd number of functions in a row, then I wind up with a three train of three train and a three train and a three train. If I have an even number, then it takes threes and threes and threes until it's got one left. So the final thing is a, is a two train. I'll show you an example of that. Um, so that's a case where, where I had an even, what you in the top row there, we have a three train or a fork, F, G, and another thing. And on the bottom, because there are an even number of functions, we have a, a two train. But all of this just follows from those simple definitions. I'm going to turn the box in. And we can see this one. If you want to try, here's a train. This is, oh, if I just type into the V14 session a whole bunch of um, uh, functions, I lean on the plus key. Uh, what, because there were an odd number, I think there are seven pluses there, I can see at the outermost level there are three functions, and then the rightmost one is a train with three functions, and then within that, the rightmost one within that is a... Uh, if there's an odd number of functions, I get a... And if I add one, uh, what I take one off, this is a, an even number, there are just six pluses there, so I can see there's a two train at the outer level, and then three trains and three trains within. There are some nice identities. Um, this is just, this is nothing to do with trains, this is just regular dialogue. Um, but this is an identity that uh, the composition operator, if I compose a left argument with a function, so this is an array composed with a function applied to B, is the same as A function B. That's just the definition of composition in dialogue and we call it left argument currying. Now that we have trains, we also have this identity. The thing on the left is a two train. It's a function. Uh, there, there are two functions. A dot G is a function and H is a function. And that's the same as uh, A G H. That's a pleasant identity. And that works both uh, in a monadic and dyadic context. Here's another 
identity that two trains are associative, um, it doesn't matter which side you put the parentheses on. You can just check that for yourself if you were to uh, give this uh, uh, one or two arguments. And this is a kind of simplification that given two tra both of those are equivalent to uh, the composition of F and G with H. Uh, the, and the way I get my head around the two train is that used dyadically, the, if you give it a left argument, the left argument hops over the first function and is an argument to the second function. Um, so in both cases, uh, if, you, if you think of a, a left argument hopping over the first function and be an argument to the second, if that's also a two train, it'll hop over that again. So it's a, it's a very um, straightforward identity. Uh, but we'll see in a moment uh, how that's a, a pleasant thing. Um, it, it, in a way, you don't, it, uh, maybe don't look at the, the next five minutes. Everybody close their eyes. It, what this is, um, in, if you, did anybody try the technical preview? Who, who tried the technical previews uh, of V14? Did anybody install those? Yeah, a couple of people tried those. Um, there was a uh, for what, what took one of the things that took us a while um, was to, uh, that we were um, for a while we were wondering whether trains should have late binding, um, and what this was uh, was it was an experiment which we uh, let me show you this what what's act, what we've actually wound up with. Um, This is a, uh, the, f the first line here is, is um, just naming a derived function. This is a, a, a summation. And then I'm using that summation to define uh, a, a train for the average um, item of a vector. Um, and one of the experiments we did was to say, uh, what, what happens in dialogue is that when the interpreter uh, is, it, is evaluating this, it looks at the value of sum and it replaces it with uh, whatever the current referent of this name is, plus slash. So average, um, if I display it, uh, I, can see, uh, I can see that it's using the value of, um, of sum in there rather than keeping its name and, and, uh, until later. So one of the experiments was to delay that. And so now if I change sum to some nonsense, um, Average is still the same, it doesn't affect it. And this is just to say, if you played with uh, TP, uh, the, the tech previews, um, that wasn't always the case. At some point we said uh, uh, this would display the, the value of sum in there. Um, and what, what we found was, the reason we abandoned that, although it was very attractive, and I think it's what J does, it, it, has, it has late binding, um, we were worried that this experiment um, was going to cause a problem for existing code. What we see here is we're naming a function and then we're making a derived function to a total which is using that and then within a yet another function we were making a local name which in this case was just the uh, a, a local variable, the sum of alpha and omega and then we were calling out to this tot function and the question was when tot was running did it see this sum or this sum? That that was a that was a problem, um, and we uh, uh, th that was causing a problem, and that's why we abandoned the late binding, uh, uh, the late binding issue. So you don't need to <laughs> actually you don't need to take any note of anything I said for the last five minutes. It's just for people who were interested in the binding issues and experiments. We, we, uh, we went with early binding. So effectively, we're back to straightforward dialogue bindings. Okay. So I'd like to give you a few examples of trains where they pop out of the woodwork. Um, uh, these come from uh, various people. They're, they're not my work. What, what we think is um, trains will start magically to appear in your code. You won't know why. Um, but you'll find, we're fairly convinced that you'll find that they just um, present themselves. And it will be one of these things where 
after a while, you you won't be able to figure how you did without them. Uh, okay. So here's an example. Here's a vector. Um, so here's a nice example. This for me is a defining. Uh, this says uh, twiddle epsilon. This is a two train. So what this is going to do, if we um, if we apply this, this is it, this exp this twiddle epsilon, uh, given an alpha and an omega, expands to twiddle alpha member omega. So um, we can do this. We can do this in one shot. Not member. Uh, we can we can do in one shot. And one of the things that uh, th this is not particularly the case here, but one of the things that the trains give you by grouping the functionality it allows the interpreter to optimize some things. For example, it, there's not a huge uh, uh, example, uh, there's not a huge benefit in this, but the interpreter wouldn't need to generate, if it's spotted not member, it wouldn't need to generate the intermediate result. It could recognize that as an idiom much more easily than if you were to say not vec member, one, two, three, because they're, they're separated. Um, here's an example. Um, so this is um, these two. Let me just show you what this looks like. Uh, oh, let me let me not do that. Uh, let me just switch this off for a moment. And uh, if I show you what that looks like, this is a three train. Um, the the binding is that's a that's a min reduction is the left tine. And a, and a catenate function and a max reduction. Okay, so this is saying take the min reduction of a uh, uh, vec catenated with a max reduction. And similarly, um, here's a first last given vec. This gives me the the first item of um, vec catenated with a last item of vec. Um, uh, in this case, when when I make this assignment, uh, how how is this how is this binding? Because on the face of it, you've got five glyphs here. How come APL is grouping uh, two of them together and two of them together? Um, and the, and the answer is that the operator to operand binding is stronger than um, uh, function to function binding. And uh, in dialog, this slash with a, a function to its left is a, an operator operand binding. So this is the tightest binding. There's a, if you Google for Defens binding, I think there's a table now that, uh, uh, if, as long as Google's found it, uh, there's a table uh, of the bindings because uh, that'll sh help you with that. Yeah, and we get the same in the. Uh, if I let me do this guy, uh, let me switch this off. We're okay for time. Yeah, we've got ten minutes. Um, uh, this is another example. Let me just test it before I ship it. Okay, that worked. Um, there's another example where you can uh, you can see four glyphs, but the plus binds with a slash bar tightly uh, and so effectively there are three functions there slash bar is a function divide is a function and tally is a function yeah it's the same same thing yeah should we carry on yeah so there's first there's first last and if i yeah yeah hi uh, is there a difference between Entering min-max vector and the definition of min-max on the same line. Do you have to in enclose within parentheses? Yeah. Yes. If you were to do, uh, um, uh, let me see. Uh, what was it? Min-max. 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 Yeah. Uh, there, there is no function train there. Um, what's happened? This is straight old vanilla flavored APL, and what's ha what's happened here is this is a, this is a monadic function, 
who's uh, there's a monadic function, there's a monadic function, and there's an argument. So the way APL binds this is it, it will bind this uh, array to a function um, t tighter than it will bind the, the, this as a train. Um, so if I, I, I don't know what's going to happen if I hit this. I can't, uh, what are we going to do? Yes, uh, what this, this is the minimum of the ravel of the maximum of this argument. So the, the maximum of this argument is five. The ravel of that is comma five. The minimum of that is comma, is comma five. It's, it's five, it's comma, yeah, comma five. Whereas if I bind this, this is a different thing. Now this is now a, tr a train. That's the difference. Yeah? So a train uh, is uh, functions in isolation. In fact, a good signature for a train is if the thing on the right, at the end of the line, or just before a closing paren, uh, is a function, then you've probably got a train. Here's another one. So this is, this is nice. This is the effectively the query of full reshape. There's a, there's a, there's a nice atop, a two train. Integer division, this is, uh, we can pronounce this atop, we can say this is, is, this is floor atop division. So 17, you know, 17 people, five cakes, Three each and two unlucky people. Is it? Uh, is that way around? Okay. Integer division. Uh, here's a sort. I'm going to I'm going to rush this a little bit now. Right now, here's this is this is important. One of the things we can do is is this makes it easy for the interpreter to spot optimizations. So what this uh, I, I think someone uh, uh, Roger or Morton has has referred to this. Um, what we're saying here is um, find where vec find the first place where vec is greater than three. Um, and here's another way of spelling this: uh, this iota commute. Find the first one. So vec greater than three is uh, is, a, is a boolean vector, <coughs> and then we want to find where the one is in that. And what the interpreter can do is to spot, because we're grouping these rather than having it as a distributed expression, the interpreter can, and I believe already does in, in some cases, Roger is, uh, is, is way ahead of us here, already optimizes many of these things. Um, here is, is, there a, uh, is there a one at all? Are there any items of, uh, of VEC uh, where VEC is greater than three? Is there a one in VEC greater than three? Or... Here's an all reduction of, of VEC greater than three. So these kind of um, patterns, um, there, there are, uh, it's easy for the interpreter to spot and they're already optimized. Now, all of the above, for example, where, where I've used greater, then they'll work for all of the relational functions. And I believe most of these are, opti these are already optimized. Um, all of the above with, um, with zero instead of one, if not, can be. And then all, all of the above, where I've got um, uh, all, all scans plus, scan, uh, and, uh, plus reductions and, uh, and reductions. So there's a whole raft of things that will go quicker, that the, it's easy for the interpreters to spot. Uh, okay, here's a couple. I think what I'd like to do, I'd like to skip... Um, I'd like to skip over a couple of things, and I'd like to show, uh, these look interesting, but I'd like to just show you this, and this is Ray's question. If you've got a single line defer, so first of all, um, if you parse an APL expression that's array function, array function, array function, array function, it looks like this. So if I were to parse that expression, it's actually a tree. And, and what's happening there, there's just one function, which is plus, and its left argument is one, and its right argument is the rest of the stuff on the line. In, in APL, functions apply to everything to their right. So, in general, if we take a single line defun, any defun you like, um, Ray's example of, um, uh, I can't remember your example, was it a... 
root of x squared plus y squared, that kind of thing. If you can express it in a defun of with embedded alphas and omegas sprinkled around and constants, then this function is equivalent to this train. And what's happening here is uh, the, the, whatever the expression to the left of the function, possibly parenthesized, uh, becomes a, a defun to which alpha and omega are passed, then the function, and then the right part of the expression to which alpha and omega are passed. So these two things are equivalent. So all I have to do, and there are two cases. If the function is monadic, the, 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 the principal function, plus in this case, is either monadic or dyadic. If it's dyadic, then it, it is equivalent to this train. If it's monadic, it's equivalent to this train. And we're done, because these are defunds, so we can apply the same procedure to them. So we can keep, and so the base case is you wind up with either an, an alpha on its own, or an omega on its own, or a constant. And the alpha goes to a, a left tack, and the omega goes to right tack, and the constant can go to this train, which, which just says k is what you need, mate. So given any... If you can write it as a single line expression in defunds, and actually you can take quite complex defunds, there are techniques in the defunds workspace to show you how to take quite multi-line defunds and recast them as single line, more complicated defunds, um, you can use this technique. And there are, this is like a little compiler, there are, there are optimizations. So for example, if we wind up with one of those, uh, we know that it's equivalent to this fork. Um, if we wind up with one of those, this is called evaluation, then we can pre-evaluate uh, a constant with a constant, and that becomes another constant. Um, this, is a, this is a nice optimization. And for monadic f, then the train f right tack is, uh, is equal to f. So just to, just to run this little compiler, here's a defun. And I'm going to run it through my compiler. So that's this defun is equivalent, this is a dyadic uh, division, so it's equivalent to this function train, this defun divide this defun. And then I'm going to run that. This is a monadic uh, function, plus, sla uh, plus slash bar, and here's a monadic function. So they both become equivalent to the two trains, plus slash and the omega. And then the omegas drop out into tax and then the tax disappear because of the optimization there so this is a procedural way of taking a a defun and converting it into a, a train so you can in general uh, if you can write it as a defun you can use this little compiler to uh, to do that i'm i'm 2 minutes over so do you want should we quit for coffee or should we ask a question maybe one question if anybody has one question no? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>